Hello my friends and welcome to Fishtree. I'm Alexander Williamson and as always today we are going to be talking about your aquariums. Now today I want to talk about sand specifically and I want to talk about deep sand substrates and using layers of sand in your aquariums. I get a lot of questions about this and I have a friend who is known for his style of tanks, Father Fish, uh, who likes to use a deep sand substrate method. And I get a lot of questions about this. And I think, unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation going around. And a lot of people who mean well and who are excited about the method and who have read maybe a Wallstead book, they've listened to Father Fish, they've listened to me, they've listened to Corey from Aquarium Co-op, whoever it may be, and uh, Novak, uh, whoever it may be that they're listening to, and they have fused together different things. And so we're not getting one set of rules or one set of instructions or claims necessarily for what everyone has in their heads as the same setup. So a deep sand substrate, in some people's minds, that means you're also not doing water changes. You're also feeding very low amounts of food. Uh, in some people's mind, that means you have to have at least 40% of the tank filled with plants. Uh, you need an under gravel filter. Uh, you need no filter. So there's all sorts of different thoughts going around the hobby and going around the internet and all sorts of different claims. And I want to try to clear up with science and my experience over the last decade of trying out 30 tanks at a time and I'm always switching them out. Uh, what I have picked up from this and also what I've read in the research and there's a lot of it on this subject because there's no doubt that a deep substrate or a deep sand bed substrate is going to perform differently in different tanks. In this tank here, I want you guys to notice the stratification down there in the substrate, but also this tank has very low light plants. This tank doesn't have a ton of nutrients. It doesn't have a ton of high light. It doesn't have a lot of flow. It's not getting a lot of water changes or anything like that. So it will have slower growing plants. And as long as you stick with those plants that aren't accessing this power that sand simply does not have of fertilizing, you'll be fine. Now, if you want to enrich that sand you can with root tabs and liquid fertilizers things like that but it's important to understand the patience required to build an ecosystem like this you are building an ecosystem and nature takes eons and we expect six months to a year it to be done now in a tank like this i also want you guys to remember that we're using sand for its physical and intrinsic properties as a material meaning it's not going to do anything that the laws of biology or physics uh, don't dictate that it can do so you need to understand what you're working with that is so key now it can separate oxygen from the water column and nutrients from the water column it can keep nutrients locked down it can sift things through brownian motion and be a barrier it holds our plants it does a lot of great things but it's not magic and it's gonna take time and to have it work properly you need to understand it properly and that's what we're going to be talking a little bit more about right now than a aerobic or oxygenated form of filtration that is up in the water column and using beneficial bacteria like nitrobacillus and nitrosomas uh, so in the normal nitrogen cycle you know we've got the uh, the ammonia turning into nitrites turning into nitrates with unique bacteria taking care of each step well there's also anoxic or anaerobic filtration and if you're interested in that I have a bunch of videos on that as well but the basics of it is that there is a low to no oxygen environment there have been a lot of studies and research done all the way back into the 1920s uh, specifically in Berlin, in Germany, they were studying what to do about waste and sewage treatment. And even today, if you know anything about septic tanks, you know that a lot of people have a drainage field or a sand uh, substrate giant block, basically, uh, out there. So we're not going to be talking about the theoretical properties and things like that. We're going to be talking about the common and practical applications. And I'm going to show you an example of 
here's one tank that's set up this way and this is what's going on with it. But before we do all that, I think it's really important that I say a couple things that have really bogged down the deep sand substrate or capped even substrate uh, methods. And that is that sand on its own, in theory, is inert. It will not nourish your plants. It will not produce anything helpful on its own. Now, over time, bacteria, archaea, fungi, uh, little critters like little microcrustaceans and copepods and isopods, things like that, can become a part of that. And over time, fish waste, plant waste, things like that will break down. And especially if you have things like snails, shrimp, um, catfish, bottom dwelling fish like plecos and things too, that will get broken down and processed into smaller and smaller layers of mold quicker and it will make its way down into the substrate. Now, this process though can take anywhere from six months all the way up to a year and a half depending on how many plants you stock it with to start and how many fish you're running in there and if you're doing water changes and if you have a filter. My preference is to put a hang off the back filter or a sponge filter in the tank while I'm starting it and to just load it with plants, you know, do like 60 to 80% of the surfaces just covered in plants and get things going. But the problem is if you're just using sand, just using a sand substrate, the first six months or so, yes, you can put plants in, but unless you add soil, you will not be able to grow much of anything. You may be able to grow some java ferns, maybe some pennywort, some kabamba, some really, really hardy stem plants, some pearl weed or something like that, uh, floating plants, but they're going to be feeding mostly off the water column and whatever fish waste is floating around. And regardless of what you hope to happen with anoxic filtration or anaerobic filtration, that is all aerobic filtration breaking down ammonia, which is waste from plants and your fish, into nitrates eventually. And those nitrates, they can build up pretty high in some cases, and your fish can be okay. It's not an immediate death sentence. A lot of people worry probably more than they need to. I'm a fan of running very low nitrate systems, and that's really easy when you have a ton of plants like this. But part of the reason why I think that a lot of the sand substrate tanks uh, and this is whether they have dirt underneath or whether it's been a year and a half and there's mulm underneath. Part of the reason why I think they do so well um, for folks is because they're not using plants other than what you'd see maybe at like Aquarium Co-op's website. Um, you're not trying to raise anything that is a super delicate plant. Like you're going to have a hard time with like pink flamingo, crypt tissue cultures or, uh, you know... Um, chai, uh, you know, <laughs> that's just not going to go well, uh, or eriocalans or, or really delicate, like rotala butterfly. With those plants, a lot of times you may even need CO2, but you definitely need highlight and you definitely need a good nutrient profile that spreads the gamut of micronutrients and macronutrients. Now, another issue with substrate being sand is a lot of people think that you know, sand is is the thing. It is the the thing that the the plants are going to be growing in. And really, what it is is it's it's a tool that we're using the physical properties of in order to facilitate our plants getting down either into the mulm, into the dirt, or whatever you know you've put down there. Root tabs, maybe. Uh, but there's got to be some sort of nutrition down there for the plants. And that can easily be made from your fish over time. And when you do that, you should definitely be thinking about, you know, when I feed my fish food, does it have a lot of phosphates? Does it have iron? Does it have mang manganese? Does it have magnesium? Because all these things are going to be needed in your plants, unless you want to be doing liquid fertilizer. Now, I just want to say, I have nothing against like liquid fertilizers and additives or root tabs. I think there is a time and place, depending on what you would want to accomplish, for all these methods and systems, and they're all pretty interesting. But 
Lucas Bretz has also opened up my mind to the, the, the fact that you can have a tank full of inert dirt. And I mean, it may have bacteria and things in it, but it is not soil. It's not hummus. Uh, it is dirt. And uh, it is dusty, sandy dirt, maybe crushed coral from, you know, eons ago and, and maybe a little bit of organic material left over, but probably carbonate and stuff um, down where he's at in Florida and stone. And yet the bacteria will colonize that. So I want to show you guys some substrates and show you what exactly I'm talking about. Because I think a lot of people that run into frustrations or that are trying to refute these sand systems or they're trying to promote these sand systems, they're kind of mixing up variables that are not ascribed to one way to do things. You can do things a bunch of different ways. And if you do it one way, it might work fine. And yet you might have someone arguing that that doesn't work. And they're talking about the sand as the commonality. But really what's more important is the nutrients, is how much are you doing water changes? Are you not doing water changes? And all of those choices have repercussions on how we take care of our tanks. So let me show you some substrates right now and let's finish up this talk and talk about some of the ins and outs and my preferences with sand with all the experimenting I've done. All right, so here we have one of my big planted tanks, and this tank's been up and running now for almost six years, I guess. Yeah, six years. Uh, and you can see here the substrate and how layered it is. Now, you can see all that iron and sulfur that is oxidized right here uh, in this orange and yellowish layer. There's also sand in the layer there, too. But this is a good old aqua soil tank. And a lot of people think, I don't want to use aqua soil because I want to do anoxic filtration. Well, let me tell you something. No matter what you do, if you have four or five inches of substrate that's dense, especially mulm or broken down aqua soil that's dust, it will become oxygen deprived. Not only that, it will have very slow moving water. So I know Kevin Novak has talked about that. And uh, the papers that I believe he worked off of for a lot of his concepts uh, were the German papers on uh, sewage treatment plants and things like that, uh, septic and drainage fields, which said you need a really slow moving plenum or basically the biosinosis baskets that he uh likes to promote but basically you can get something similar from your substrate right here it's still going to be waterlogged and there's still going to be ion exchange and different movement at an atomic level especially because of the difference in temperature and then if you have things like malaysian trumpet snails and little scuds and little uh you know other ram's horn snails and things like that things are just going to move around in here and so will the water slowly that therefore taking on properties that the bacteria in that area in dow now one thing that i learned that was really fascinating to me is that uh, a a a research and development head at CCAM that I met at the uh, Aquatic Gardener Association let me know that anywhere you're seeing this orange line, that is where the oxygen ran out at the bottom of the line. This is all rust or oxidized. And yes, it can settle farther down over time too, um, or it can be disrupted by plants. That's what happened here is I had a big plant here at one point, probably something like this. But that will let you know where your anoxic or your anaerobic layer is. Now, it may begin above that a bit too, but that for sure is going to mean that below that you don't have oxygen. And uh, the only oxygen you do have in those layers is going to be surrounding the roots brought down by plants. Now, some plants create a little ecosystem, so to speak, uh, a little bubble around them of having no oxygen so they can work with bacteria and exchange nutrients and, and uh, fertilizers. But they also bring down with them in themselves oxygenation through their uh, vasal system. So that can also oxygenate a substrate. Now, 
an even older tank that I have that's even more out of control is this one here. And here we can see there's cyanobacteria growing on the glass. And you may say, oh, that's awful. But here, this was sand all the way up to here. And I actually capped it with a layer of dirt, which now I would never do. I don't know why I did that. You know, it was just an experiment. But over here, you can see what it looks like when there's not light directly coming from this tank that has a high powered light on it there's no cyanobacteria growing in here but what there is is there's a whole bunch of lava rock in here and there's even pvc pipes back in where it goes all the way up to as tall as a solo cup so whatever that is eight inches uh there's pvc pipe and uh very porous rock and all of that i was hoping would host i didn't care if it was aerobic or anoxic uh, bacteria but it would host it now another thing I should mention is that if you're going to want to get substrate and soil here you can see on this side of the aquarium where it's got the cyanobacteria growing because of the light um, this one here on this side you can really see that um, the uh, stratification all the mulm and stuff has worked its way down so the aqua soil up top has broken down and it's working its way down and there was even another layer of aqua soil way back when but it's been kind of disturbed but i just wanted to show you that how tall the substrate really is in this tank it's it's pretty it's pretty deep it's probably five inches here uh, to accomplish what you're seeing here and my preference is to use pool filter sand because if you use things like aragonite, if you use things like uh, clay, uh, diatomaceous earth, things like that, that's all fine. They all have their own properties and we're not going to get into that today. But they affect the pH, GH, and KH of your water. And they also have a carbonic influence with the carbon cycle in your aquarium. And uh, if you're using like aragonite, for instance, as many people use in saltwater aquariums, that's gonna lock up your phosphates as well. And my fear is that over time, when you have a monolithic layer, when you don't make a lasagna out of it or mix it all up, your substrates, even though this does look stratified, stratified but if you had just one layer of all sand and just one layer of soil or vice versa um, that when you dig into that it's just a bank of phosphorus and ammonia waiting to come up because when you do anoxic filtration uh, from your substrate usually it is turning the nitrates back into ammonia and it requires plants to put their roots down to feed off the ammonia because plants actually like low concentration ammonia more than they like nitrates and nitrites for the most part. So over here you can see that we've got a whole carpet going on of dwarf hair grass. We've got uh, crypts. We've got uh, lindernia. Uh, we've got uh, all sorts of different uh, persicaria and stuff that is actually pretty high maintenance as far as plants go. Uh, Bacopa salzmani, uh, you know, some of the brighter color stem plants were in here and are kind of tucked back in there. Mini butterfly and Rotala orange juice. Um, and what's interesting to see is that this substrate is sand and then soil and then sand again. And doing this, you can see the substrate, the silt that's built up from the fish waste. It's everything from algae and debris all the way down to plant roots and plant debris. And in this tank, the roots are clearly reaching down into this layer. And as Father Fish says in his videos, the sand is really just holding your plants in place. You only need to put your plants into the sand 
you don't want to put them down into this layer that has ammonia and has all sorts of other properties and trace minerals. I add iron and sulfur because when you want anoxic filtration, anoxic uh, reactivity to be going on with the nitrogen cycle, those bacteria require a little bit of sulfur and a little bit of iron and they will then actually basically uh, burp out <laughs> nitrous oxide as one of their metabolites. Just like plants put out oxygen or CO2, they put out nitrous oxide. And that nitrous oxide is actually ammonia and nitrates and nitrites being expelled as a gas. Now the other thing that's going on is when you use aqua soil, unlike sand, it is going to lower your pH and buffer your water a little bit. Now some sand will buffer your water. Some sand is crushed coral and things like that or aragonite. But if you're using quartz sand, which is what I recommend, pool filter sand or black diamond sand, I recommend inert sand because we're just using it for its property of being a sifting uh, layer and being a holder of the plants, essentially, and a cap to lock in what's going on underneath biologically and chemically. And if you do that, it will work very well for you. In fact, these hair grass didn't want to really stick into the substrate until there was a nice thick layer of mulm and then it really got growing. And what that is, is that's me skipping gravel backing and you can see the roots are really being held in by the grains of sand in between that substrate, that aqua soil, which is a fluval and ADA Amazonia. And it's being held in there because the sand was on top. Now it's settling down through the aqua soil layer and the densest things are moving down through Brownian motion. And really, that's another property of the sand that you are chasing after or utilizing. So as long as you understand these things and don't expect more or less from them than they, the laws of physics and biology dictate they're going to give you, I think it's a wonderful way to keep fish and it works great. But it does require patience and it does require an understanding of what you're doing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.